Godzilla has reigned supreme since first emerging in 1954. This megastar of wonton destruction kicked off a kaiju craze for creators Toho, ushering in an age of monsters that's endured across generations. And with the rise of the tokusatsu giants, Godzilla 2 would grow beyond the world of cinema, making his presence known across comics, cartoons, and of course, in the video games. With the return proper of the legendary Monster King setting the clock back to minus one, it's time to sit back and take a look at some of the more memorable entries in Godzilla's gaming library. First off, releasing in 1988, we have Godzilla Monster of Monsters for the NES. This early game from Toho serves up some hybrid gameplay as you team with Mothra to fight off alien invaders and battle giant space monsters. You start on an isometric game board and choose a character to move a limited number of spaces. Landing on a space enters a stage, and here things take on a side-scroller action style. Your goals in these levels are simple. Fight your way to the right, destroy the alien armies, and survive. Godzilla can punch, kick, and swing his tail, while Mothra shoots projectiles. Both characters get a special attack on the start button, and these will come in handy. Once you clear a level, it's back to the game board, and if you find yourself close to an opposing enemy, you can fight Mana Wo Monster, and this is pretty cool featuring lots of Toho Giants in an 8-bit free-for-all. Clear as many boards as possible, defeat the enemy monsters, and that's the game. It's simple, but it's fun. The large sprites convey a good sense of scale for the NES, and the music sets a unique and spacey atmosphere. I've always liked this game as it too feels like it came from another planet. There was a sequel that takes on a real-time strategy approach, but I'd recommend playing this one first. Next up in 1993, developed for the Turbo Duo, we have Godzilla Battle Legends, which is a one-on-one -on -one monster fighter with an awesome presentation. Toho on the Turbo delivers a nice selection of classic characters when playing versus, but you'll play as Godzilla only in single player. Starting a match, you get these suitably epic scrolling title cards while the game loads and then it's into the main event. The game plays like a simplified Kaiju Street Fighter 2, which is only a good thing, and you get a good amount of attacks with the Turbo's two-button pad. Depending on which monster you're fighting, Godzilla will take on the irreappropriate look from that battle in the movies, which is a really cool touch, and you can tell there's love for the franchise across this game. The design in general looks excellent, and the CD quality soundtrack adds a lot to the experience. This entry is top tier 90s Godzilla gaming, and I highly recommend if you can, fire this one up. Then in 1994, Godzilla Monster War made its way to the Super Famicom in Japan, and this is a proper sequel to the Turbo Duo game. For the most part, you get more of Battle Legends here on a different platform, still retaining the great action, graphics, and sound, but it does lose that CD soundtrack. The fighting flows a little faster on Super Famicom, and the extra buttons are put to use on that pad. All in all, a really nice package, and of course being 16-bit Nintendo, you get some cool Mode 7 on the map screen. If you like Battle Legends, Monster War is just more of what you hope for. I recommend playing them both, but I do like my Titans on the Turbo just a little more. Moving into the 3D age, Sega in 1998 released Godzilla Generations on their new powerhouse console the Dreamcast as a launch title in Japan. Playing almost like an early tech demo, your objective here is as straightforward as possible. Be a giant monster and destroy. You play as Godzilla or Mecha Godzilla to start out, with more monsters unlockable throughout your play. Embracing a cinematic presentation, you must meticulously wipe out everything in sight with buildings, army men, and alien spaceships standing in your way. Your character controls like a massive tank, which works to convey the heft of your giant as you carve a path of destruction across different areas. You get the official Godzilla theme while unleashing mayhem on multiple cities, and it feels the most movie-like in that way, capturing the feel of the Toho classics. 
clearing a stage does require some attention though, as your monster accepts no less than total destruction, with every tree and piece of civilized engineering needed to be completely wrecked before you call it a day. Honestly, this game could be called a kaiju walking simulator, and I have no problem with that. It makes me feel like I'm directing shots for a throwback Godzilla movie or controlling a fun screensaver, and that's really all I need. As an early game, I think it was meant to be more of a fun demo than a whole fat experience, but that doesn't mean it isn't fun. Check this one out. Then in 1999, Sega fans got a follow-up with Godzilla Generations Maximum Impact, also on the Dreamcast. While technically a sequel, this one plays completely different, taking out a rail shooter approach which is a neat idea and a nice change of pace. You aim with a cursor and mark targets to unleash your atomic breath on, not dissimilar to the way you aim in something like Panzer Dragoon or Rez. Once you learn the timing of marking your targets with the release of your destructive blast, the game becomes a lot of fun. I really like the nighttime mood and you get some sharp graphics with some great music driving the action. You'll take on a boss featuring one of Toho's rogues at the end of every level, and the whole experience just feels arcade-like and fun. The cinematics are my favorite kind of early CG FMV, and just like Generations, I like how right to the point everything is here. They really kept it lean and mean. With a fresh take on just what you could do with Godzilla in a video game, Maximum Impact makes for a solid good time. Godzilla and friends have gone portable more than a few times over the years, but the best handheld experience you can have outside of watching the official release of Final Wars on PSP has got to be Godzilla Domination on the Game Boy Advance. Released in 2002 as a companion game to the next game we'll get to, Domination, developed by WayForward and published by Atari, takes on more of a Saturday morning cartoon style and they did a fantastic job. You have six selectable monsters to choose from, and gameplay is a classic 2D throwdown. Each character has their own attributes like speed, range, and attack, with power-ups popping up as well. There can be two to four characters on screen fighting at once, and the stages have a nice open feel to work with this. A few levels have their own modifiers like slippery ice or low gravity, and these add a little extra flavor. The game also supports multiplayer via the link cable, which I imagine is a good time. The 32-bit art style still looks great today, and it's paired with some really excellent music to keep things lively. In Japan, this game got some changes with Godzilla, Mechagodzilla, and Mothra all getting redesigns to coincide with the then-upcoming release of Godzilla Tokyo SOS in theaters, and it's cool to see the differences. Either way you play though, Domination offers the best way to keep Toho's monsters in your pocket. Also in 2002, releasing on Nintendo's GameCube, we have Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, and this is the real deal. Equal parts silly and satisfying, Melee is like the WrestleMania of Godzilla Monster Brawlers. Similar to Domination with a bit of Saturday morning cartoon feel, here an alien race is taking control of the monsters, and you get this enjoyable intro setting things up. You've got 11 monsters to choose from with more unlockable in adventure mode, and once you choose your go-to, it's a no-holds-barred until you're the last monster standing. Everything looks great and plays incredibly smooth at 60 FPS on the GameCube, adding to the over-the-top arcade feel. The monsters all have their own attacks, stats, and specials that fit their personality, and you couldn't ask for much more. You get different eras of Godzilla to select from, and the whole experience feels like a long, gestating love letter to the monsterverse as a whole. The sound design works just as well, and I like how they went all in on just making the most enjoyable Godzilla game possible. It's absolutely no more or less than it needs to be. There's also some different modes of play here to keep you going, and you can play four player simultaneous verses, which I'm sure is a blast. 
The game did get a few sequels like Godzilla Save the Earth here on PS2, which is mostly more of the same with graphics that are maybe a little more detailed, but the frame rate isn't a match for GameCube. Still incredibly fun though, and there was also Godzilla Unleashed rounding out the trilogy, which looks like it runs better on Wii than PS2, but I only have the PS2 version to show today. Either way, you can't go wrong with any of these games, but Destroy All Monsters Melee is still king among the three. Monsters Fight! Am I still on? Oh. Uh, well, we now return you to whatever it was you were doing. <laughs>